Thank you. Thank you. Even with that introduction, I know there are a bunch of you going, a photographer's going to close this? Why are you here? Look, <laughs> the only reason I'm here, the only reason I'm here, is to just share with you the very best that I've learned in my life. That's it. Don't take notes. I think if you dig deep inside yourself, you find that you know a lot of what I'm saying already. But what I'd like you to do over the next little while is just to join me, to help me in creating right here, right now, an extraordinary vision. An extraordinary vision. A vision that I think we all know is possible every day if we just have the courage to manifest it. Do you have a vision like that? For yourself, a vision that you could distill down into six words, you know, your own private bumper sticker. A vision that every day when you got up and said those six words, you said, yes. Yes, that's why you're doing whatever it is you're doing. Because when the vision is clear, when the vision is just, just juicy enough, then passion and creativity are there as well. And when passion and creativity are there, discipline and commitment, non-issues. I know that. I know that because I lived it. We could have the lights, please. I lived it. All of a sudden, I wasn't looking at the pictures on the printed page. I was there. Everywhere I went, there would be amazing beauty for me to photograph. And in those landscapes were lessons that would change my life. The conservationist John Muir once wrote, when we try and pick out any one thing by itself, we'll find it hitched to everything else in the universe. And the more I photographed, the more nature showed me that connection and beauty graced by light. And yet, the more I shot for the geographic, the more I found this strange tension growing up between the worldview of the geographic and the worldview that I'd been raised in since I was a kid, you know, my, my intellectual paradigm, my, my stone chipper's paradigm, if you will. I mean, you all know it. The law of the jungle, eat or be eaten, my win is your loss, second place is the first loser. Oh, God. I saw that on a t-shirt the other day. That is a very depressing way to look at life. Now, maybe it's how we had to look at it when we dragged ourselves to the mouth of our cave and ran into a saber-toothed tiger, but come on. Everybody in this room has planned life at a higher level than that. And yet, when we get scared or fearful, that's the paradigm that rises up. But that's not what nature was showing me. Nature said, how many rolls you got to win? Bring it on. Bring it on, I'll fill it up. I'll fill it up with beauty and possibility beyond your wildest imaginings, right down to my tiniest seed. And that was just a much more interesting philosophy, a much more compassionate way of looking at the universe. And at some point, I just decided to embrace it. I just decided that if I had a choice between a world based on scarcity and fear and one based on possibility, then man, I was choosing possibility. Nature was sharing with me one of her most important lessons. Time and again, she would show me that there's more than one right answer. There's more than one right answer. It seems so simple, but it is the key to creativity. It's the key to entrepreneurialism as well. There are a thousand ways to come at any challenge to find that extraordinary view, and I know it so easily from my photography, but sometimes it's just so hard to bring over in the rest of my life. They sent me to a little town called Smith River. They raise about 80% of the Easter lilies in the country around that village, and that's the story I had to tell. And I've got a, a frame where I got picked lilies and unpicked lilies, and the boy picking them, and good body language as he puts them in the box, a little bit of the region's architecture and the weather. One right answer. A pretty good one. But boy, as a photographer, I'd never think of stopping there. I took that image, immediately I grabbed another lens, walked over a couple rows, knelt down, and found Another right answer. Same parameters of the problem, now seen from a totally different point of view. And my favorite right answer that day was this one. This is an advanced levitation technique that I'll be teaching just after the break here. <laughs> you know, somebody had a chopper in the fields, I get a ride, get up a couple hundred feet, look down, see the extraordinary and the ordinary. Three right answers. So many things begin to change when you come at your life from that perspective of more than one right answer. 
I mean, first of all, you don't stop at the initial right answer. That's just doing your job. None of you would be here in this room today if you stopped at the first right answer. But the kick is, the kick is that when you really believe it, then as you press out looking for that next right answer, which we're asked to do every day, you do so not in terror, but comfortably, knowing it's going to be there for you. And you really do begin to embrace change rather than fear it. You really do hit the day with a sense of possibility, not paralysis. And you just get more and more comfortable with reframing an obstacle into an opportunity. This is the Butter and Eggs Day Parade in Petaluma, California. I raised my kids there. and Every year they'd have this parade and I'd get out there, the kids would be in it and I'd be photographing. And one year I saw this veteran handing flags to the kids beside the road. And I thought, great shot, man, I'm a pro, I'm gonna grab it. So I slapped on a telephoto lens and I ran over there and I missed it. Nobody's given anything to anybody in this shot. It's a mistake, it's a setback, but come on, we don't learn without a few of those. When I shot for the Geographic, the average article was shot in 400 rolls of film. That's over 14,000 images, 14,000 tries to get the 30 that went in the magazine. And now with digital, it's twice that. I'm not thinking about making mistakes. I'm looking for that next right answer. Did I get it? No, I got E.T.'s hand over there on the right. You know? <laughs> you know, amateur photographers will come up to me and they'll go, DeWitt, how many good ones did you get in an eight gig card? I turn it back to him, I said, that's the amateur question. The professional question is, did you get it? Did you get it? I don't care how many rolls it takes. We all know when those right answers come into focus, they just go, Katoom, you know, and you got it. But it doesn't happen unless you're willing to press out on the edge of your own comfortable envelope to take the risk to look for that next right answer. When I'd go after an extraordinary vision, there were four steps that I'd try and go through. And the first one was to train my technique. To train my technique. Because vision without technique is blind. It's fine to have a wonderful vision, but if you don't have the technique and technology to manifest it, you have nothing. So I'd spend days, weeks, months, years with my technique, f-stops and shutter speeds and strobes so that when nature did open a window of possibility, I wasn't worried about what lens was on my camera, I was there ready to capture it. And then I want to put myself in the place of most potential. If nature's going to open up multiple windows of opportunity, where do I have the best chance of finding them? The place of most potential. So I was doing some aerials for a book on Lake Powell and I'm flying in over what I thought was an uninhabited and uninhabitable part of the lake. And I look down and over there on the right, maybe some of you close can see it, there's a road. There's a road and at the end there's a car. I didn't even know anybody could get out there. And yet seeing it, I knew it was possible. So I came back to my campsite, I looked at the maps, that point was in the perfect direction. Grabbed another book, figured out the day I wanted to get there, rented a four-wheel drive, stuffed it with provisions, bumped all the way out to that overlook, but I was there in the place of most potential the night the full moon rose over the lake. And when you're there in the place of most potential with your technique down, those right answers just keep coming. Train your technique. Put yourself in the place of most potential. And then the third step, it seems like the easiest, but I really think it's the hardest, and that's just to open to possibilities. Possibilities you never dreamed of. I was doing a little article on marine world, and I'd photographed the, the dolphins and the killer whales and the water skiers and the tigers. I had it. I'm coming back to the car. I was done. And then just out of the corner of my eye, just out of my peripheral vision, I saw this thing called a dancing fountain. I mean, you've all seen them. You know, the water comes out of one, goes in a big parabola into the next one, out of that into the next. Looks like a big worm going across the horizon. And this kid has his hand on the source, you know. <laughs> and he's waiting, and so am I. And he's ready, and so am I. And I know what that next right answer is going to be. And man, I nailed it. <laughs> but I'm not shutting down. I'm not closing down. I'm not thinking this is the only right answer. Because if I did, I never would have seen this one. <laughs> You know, just be it open to possibilities you never dreamed of. When the great photographer Minor White would go out to photograph, he would never say, what will I take today? Rather, he would ask, what will I be given today? 
And I would add, will I be open enough to recognize it? Train your technique. Put yourself in the place of most potential. Open to possibilities. And then finally, focus your vision by celebrating what's right in the situation. Live that vision of the geographic. Seize the day, my friends. Seize the day. Thank you very much. Thank you.